Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about GNOME. Now, after trying GNOME for a few weeks while trying Ubuntu 2010, I've come to the conclusion that I might have been just a little bit wrong about GNOME as a desktop environment. Not a lot wrong, but a little wrong. It takes quite a lot for me to admit I was wrong, so everybody should be happy about this. Now, Let's go ahead and jump to the front, to the main screen here, so you can actually have something to look at. Um, so today I just thought I would go through and talk about the five reasons, five or six reasons, why I was wrong. And then maybe at the end, explain a little bit why I still feel GNOME isn't that great. So I've installed Fedora on a virtual machine here. So I want to start off with this. Uh, Fedora was the easiest <laughs> desktop or distro I've ever installed in VirtualBox. It was flawless. Um, it was so good. <laughs> so we're just, that has nothing to do with the video. I just wanted to point that out. And it's completely off script because I actually did write a script for this, which I've proven that I can't follow. So anyways, let's just jump into the reasons why GNOME is better than I thought it was. So the first reason is it's faster than ever. In the good old days, GNOME was the slowest piece of trash that ever existed in the Linux desktop. It was just so slow. It was, com uh, it was usable in the barest sense. Uh, and it, this, uh, at least this was true once GNOME 3 became a thing. Prior to that, GNOME 2 was actually really good. It was very popular. Um, the speed... The speed and performance was one of the reasons why the Mate project exists, after all. Uh, the developers there didn't care for the performance of GNOME, and they didn't care for the UI of GNOME 3, so they stuck with the GNOME 2 paradigm and went on from there. These days, GNOME is so much faster, it's kind of awesome. So, um, I've been using this just a little while, um, so it does have some you know, usual first time running problems, but for the most part, as you can tell, this is very fast. This is, v I mean, this is so much faster than it used to be. Um, and this is in a virtual machine with f like four cores and like eight gigabytes of RAM. So imagine what it would run on, a, you know, on bare metal. So, I mean, it'd be really good and it does run really good on bare metal. I've done it before. Um, so, it's really fast. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that GNOME is the fastest desktop environment out there. That's because it's not true. Uh, it's and it's definitely not the lightest by a long shot. I mean, if you want a light desktop environment, you look at XFCE or LX Cute or LX DE, even though that's really old, um, or you know, a, a window manager of some kind. Um, so it's not lightest, but comparing it to where it was three years, even three years ago. It's not completely night and day. It's so much faster. It's completely usable. Um, I, I wouldn't have a hard time adapting to using it every day as my you know daily drive driver if there weren't other things that you know piss me off, which we'll talk about later. Part of the reason why it's faster is because of the animations. Now I can't show you that in the um, in the virtual virtual box because the most for the most part animations are off in virtual box. Like, for instance, the app drawer here, there's no animation. I believe on bare metal there still is an animation. But, for the most part, the animations are so much faster than they used to be. Uh, previously, the animations in GNOME were so slow, it took like 20 seconds for the app drawer thingy to roll itself out. Uh, kind of like a teenager wanting to go to, not wanting to go to class. Uh, <laughs> I actually did write that down in the script, that's funny. Um, now it's almost instantaneous, as you saw. And... and if you turn on animations off in GNOME, like on bare metal, like I said, I, using GNOME tweaks you, which you have to do, um, it's even faster, like no weight at all, it's just, I mean, you wouldn't even notice the difference. Um, app launch times have also improved, so, uh, like we have uh, files here, Fi Nautilus is a notoriously bloated app, and, uh, you know, it just opens instantaneously, and like I said, this is on a virtual machine, it's very, very fast. Um, so, and, and one area where it used to be really, really slow was with snaps. Um, now, I can't show you anything snap on here. Like, I don't know if this actually ended up working. Yeah, there we go. 
That's what I wanted. That's what I was trying to do. I had to learn how to install software in Fedora. I had never done it before, so I'm, it's something completely new for me. Um, it did take a long time to install, but I think that's just because it's had to do uh, update the repos or something. Anyways, um, snaps used to be notoriously slow for startup times. They're just so bad, uh, you know. And even now, the reputation persists, but they're better than they used to be. I still don't like the closed source nature of the Snap Store, but they're way better than before in terms of performance. They're also better in terms of theming, but and and that's going to get even better in the next year according to some of the things that I've read. Um, okay, reason number two: the new theme is good looking. So this is uh, an Ubuntu specific version of GNOME thing. So the classic Ubuntu thing was nice uh, for the first few years of it. Then it got boring and old, and then it went beyond that. Now I know what you're thinking. Matt, isn't this an Ubuntu thing, not a GNOME thing? Yes. And I want to talk about it for, for a little while. Wow. Um, for most people, their only experience with GNOME is going to be Ubuntu. They're not going to come here to Fedora and use Fedora. Uh, even though I think people should use Fedora because I'm, I'm telling you right now, the installation of this thing was so much better than any experience I've ever had with Ubuntu, at least in virtual machine. It's just, it was, it was so good. Anyways, uh, for, 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 like I said, for most people, their only experience will be the Ubuntu version of GNOME, and they will never experience vanilla. This is it. Fedora and GNOME are run by the same company. And this is, if you want vanilla GNOME, that's what this is. That's what you're going to get. It's going to look like this. Uh, the vanilla version of GNOME is, you'll be using the Adewata, Adewata, whatever it's called, theme whatever this is, this is Adawata or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce it. Nobody does. Uh, <laughs> even the developers don't know how to pronounce it. I guarantee it. Um, and it is ugly as it's always been. Seriously, whoever designed this should just stop designing because they're bad at it. They should retire and be done with it and find a new day, a new day job. It's just, this is, this is not what a, a modern UI should look like in terms of theming. It's just not. Uh, that's the reasons why this reason here is because the is I focused on Ubuntu. The new Ubuntu I can't show you because I'm in, in Fedora, but the new Ubuntu theme, which is called Yaru, I think, or something, is really good looking. You know, it's really nice. It's it's consistent. It's modern looking, uh, and it looks like the designers actually knew what they're doing in, in that. So uh, I, I know. <laughs> I know, I know technically this point here was a point against GNOME, but I think because the biggest representation of GNOME out there is Ubuntu, it is actually a point in GNOME's favor because uh, it, it has, uh, it's just a good theme and that's the way most people will experience it. Now, if they go to use Fedora, they'll experience this nonsense. And, and as we'll talk about later, there's no way to change this theme. If you use Fedora... This is the theme you're going to use unless you use GNOME Tweaks, which is basically aka GNOME Hacks. It's a, it's a hack, is what that is. I mean, all theming is hack. And, uh, that's what the GNOME people will tell you, um, and whether that's true, I'm not technologically advanced enough to know. Um, but I, I this is the theme, and the fact that you can't change it. I mean, as far as I know... I'm not sure if uh, in Vanilla Gnome you can change the color. Not the color. So it's not the color displays. No. Um, so like in Ubuntu, you can go through and at least at least enable the dark mode. I'm not seeing that here at all. Um, it might be here, and I'm just not seeing it, but. The fact that you you can't is is just it, that's it's horrible. I mean, this is just a bad thing. Anyways, reason number three, and actually I probably shouldn't have closed that because that was my my next one. Uh, the settings app is good. It used to be about two years ago I think GNOME revamped its setting app settings apps. It was um, messy before. I don't really remember what it. All the specifics of it before, but I just remember that it was messy. It was a co as I have in my script written right here. I, it was a convoluted mess. It's much better now than it was before. The choices in the app are streamlined. You can, for the most part, you can find things that you need to find. Um, it's e easy to navigate. You know, 
it's just simple and comparing it to like the mess that is kde settings app which has every setting under the sun this is a great settings app especially if you're a new user um so it's a good thing that it's different than KDE because it's not KDE is not for everyone. And despite my eternal love for plasma, uh, I'll be the first to admit that it's a very complicated thing that you really shouldn't point new users towards. The on the other hand, which I'll talk about later, this being so limited really kind of limits the power users' uh, ability to. Uh, you know, control and customize things, which you can do in Plasma, right? Um, so the next, my next uh, point is, is it's very stable. The one thing you can always say about uh, Gnome Session and Mutter, which is what the w window manager usually is, um, is that it's stable. It doesn't crash. Um, it's really hard to mess up because it's so locked down, you can't make changes to it for the most part. Um Yeah, uh, I mean, I was looking to see if you could have, if it even has the extensions ma uh, app pre-installed, which it does not, um, which we'll talk about in later. But anyways, you can't change this so much, at, you know, at all. So it's very stable. The one thing about GNOME is that it's always been more stable than most other de DEs, de desktop environments. There have been some show-stopping bugs in the past, and there have been some releases that have been unusually buggy, I guess, because of, you know, or unusable because of performance issues but for the most part gnome is one of the most stable d's you can find i still don't care for the way mutter or gnome shell manage uh windows and workspaces which i'll talk about in a little, in a little while um but for the most part because it's so stable if you want a stable you know desktop environment gnome may be the best choice now uh i want to show this here we're going to lock this screen this is the lock screen and it is Way prettier than it used to be. <laughs> it used to be just the box. If I remember, I'm pretty sure it didn't have a picture, it didn't have a name, it just was literally the password box. It might have even been a dialog box, I don't remember, but I know this is way better looking. I mean, and I'm pretty sure you can customize this just like you can, or you used to be able to. So that's one of the, you know, it's a good thing, right? Because I mean, KDE has really good, really good looking lock screens, and now GNOME does too. So I'll. We'll walk back in. Um, so the last one I have is something that's a little bit iffy because it requires an app, which I'm not sure where you can actually find. Extend. Yeah, right here. This is the GNOME extensions app. It still does not come pre-installed on GNOME. It's really weird. Um, and I'm not sure why it does not do that. <laughs> it really should. It still it makes GNOME extensions. For those of you who don't know, uh, extensions basically allow you to to install little plugins so that your desktop environment will, you know, can do extra things like have icons up here at the top or folders on the desktop. Um, and that's not something you can do by default. You have to have an extension. Um, and that's really annoying for the most part. But the GNOME team is inching a little bit closer towards making uh, extensions more, I don't know. I I, I want to call them first-class citizens, but that was before I, I knew that the extensions app wasn't actually installed by default. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about extensions later, but it's closer than it was before. It used to be you had to install GNOME Tweaks, in order to install an, ex uh, an extension, now you don't have to do that. You just have to install this, which is I, I, why not just install GNOME tweaks? I'm not. Um, we'll talk about that. We might as well just move right into the. So, as you can tell, I still have some problems with GNOME. It is better than before. So, some of my problems include extensions. We'll, we'll just. I mean, we we're just we we're just talking about it. They still feel like second-class citizens, meaning that GNOME doesn't really want you to use them. It feels like they want you to not use them and just go about their, uh, you know, vision of using GNOME. No extensions. This is the way it's going to be forever and ever, and you know, just live with it. 
I mean, they make this extensions apps, but they don't install it. So despite the new extensions apps, extensions are still hard to install. So you have to install this this thing. You have to install a browser extension. You have to go into the um, GNOME store on the internet, select your 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 extension you want to install, and go through jump through all these hoops. Why the GNOME extensions aren't in the software store? I don't know. <laughs> it's really weird. It, they really should be, and I don't know why they're not. Um, so extensions are just. I mean, it, extensions make GNOME usable, and the fact that they're still treated as taboo by the GNOME team is mind-boggling. So I can't really show this next one. Workspaces are bad in GNOME. So if you, especially if you have multiple monitors, uh, if you want to switch the workspace. Uh, I can't remember how to do it on GNOME, you know, but I'll just use. I can't use. But you know, these are workspaces, and you can have as many as you want. But if you sw if you have multiple monitors and you switch between one and two, it switches between one and two on both monitors. That is trash. <laughs> that means you basically both monitors just count as one workspace, and that's just not the way I want things to work. So that's another th reasons why it's just not good. That's just not the way things should work. And as long as it's that way, I would never be able to use GNOME. So uh, the design thing really bothers me. In vanilla GNOME, uh, this theme is not, it, it's, it's not good. It's ugly. It's better than it was. It's less brown than it used to be. At least now it's more gray, I guess. But it, it's still not good. And the, um, the file app... These icons go away with these icons. They're so bad, um, the, and, and it wouldn't be so bad if you could theme it, right? You can't theme vanilla GNOME or even really Ubuntu GNOME, GNOME, <laughs> whatever. Uh, at least in at least in Ubuntu, you can change the dark theme. The dark theme is but is okay. This, you know, and the. Ubuntu theme, you know, just regular light is completely different than this. It's, you know, orange and black and whatever. And it looks good. This, you can't change it unless you install GNOME Tweaks. And that's, uh, <laughs> you know, that's a hack. And most new users aren't going to know that. So they're going to be stuck with this. And this is what they come to Linux for. And this is, this is ugly. I mean, this is just not, this is not pretty. And the GNOME team considers theming to be a true hack. And maybe technologically it is, but it is still something that most every GNOME user will want to do because this is bad. Um, but, and, and, I mean, and you can tell that users want to be able to think because every non Fedora GNOME distro, like Ubuntu and, you know, some, some of the other ones, they all theme stuff, even though it's technically it's quote unquote a hack. Um, so I've always thought that GNOME is best used as a keyboard first desktop environment. So there are key bindings in this desktop environment. How you find them, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think you go down here and about and no, I have no clue. Keyboard shortcuts are ah, right here. Yeah, you can find these, but they're you know, look at all these keyboard shortcuts. That's awesome, right? But they're hard to find. Uh, they're not intuitive. The only one you can use, you know, super gets you to some places, but what are the other ones? Most of these are disabled, so they're not, they don't even exist in the first place. Um, I still maintain that it's the best use with a keyboard outside of a, tel you know, a tiling window manager, but because it's their host so hard to discover, and because there's some things you just can't do with a, uh, like, I'm pretty sure, like, you can move to, to monitors, you can move to workspaces, um, but you can't say you want to move this app over to this side and have it tile over here. You have to use the mouse to do that. And because everything else can be done with a keyboard shortcut, the fact that you still have to use your mouse is kind of annoying. Anyways, that's just uh, kind of a minor grip grip compared to everything else so um so conclusion time i've been ranting on this for 20 minutes uh i no longer hate gnome my biggest problem beforehand with it 
outside of the theming because I'm a big I'm a big theme guy because I I'm a, I'm a power user. I can install GNOME tweaks and theme the damn thing. So that's not a huge deal. For new users it is, but for me it really is not. The, my biggest problem was always performance. It's because it was so slow. Now that it's, take, that it's mostly taken care of, it's perfectly fast now. It's just as fast as any other desktop environment out there. It's Maybe it's not as fast as a tiling window manager, but you really can't compare those two things. It, it just isn't for me. I don't care for the UI or the hackiness of GNOME tweaks. I don't want to have to install GNOME tweaks in order to do things. I don't want to have to install... If it was easy to install extensions, like... If the, if the extensions were in the, you know, GNOME software, and it was easy to install, you know, great. You know, it would allow me to add the features that GNOME, the GNOME team keeps insisting on taking out and we'll we'd be able to work but you can't do that you have to, to go through these run through these hoops in order to get to them it just feels like at the moment the gnome team might i i, I compare gnome to apple's philosophy if you yeah you it, it just feels like the gnome team might take any of your abilities a way to use GNOME tweaks completely away. Just to make them, like, take them completely away. And then GNOME would be even worse because then you can't do the hackiness that gets you to make it look okay, make it function good. Um, and it just, it, it just, it, if you remember back about five years ago, Apple would play cat and mouse with jailbreakers on their iPhones. And they, you know, the, the hackers would find a loophole so they could jailbreak it and then Apple would patch it and then back and forth and back and forth they would go. And honestly, that's the best way I can describe GNOME. It feels like a walled garden, much like Apple's ecosystem does. The only thing that seems completely different is that GNOME designers don't know how to design like Apple does. Um, GNOME has complete control over the desktop environment. And while that's great for new users, for more experienced users, you have to find hacks and you have to find tweaks and you have to find extensions and all these things in order to make it usable. And uh, it's just not its just not for me. For now, if I have to use a full DE, Plasma will remain my choice. So, that is it for... This show, that was just one gigantic long-ass rant. Basically me saying, GNOME is better than it used to be, uh, but it's still not for me. I was wrong about GNOME, you know, though, because I've told for years people to do... Oops, uh, I hit my headphones on the damn microphone again. Anyways, I've told people for years <coughs> not to use GNOME because it's slow, it's, you know, not pretty, it's not... It, the... GNOME team has been notorious for taking feature features out of the desktop instead of putting new features in. Uh, but now, while some of that stuff is still true, at least it's taken care of the biggest thing I've always had against it, with, which is um, the performance. So, that is it for me this time. I want to th let everybody know, give this a thumbs up, a, th a thumbs down, subscribe, all that stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.